All right, we are back in action on Dusteldon Live, my new favorite place to play. And the first hand we're going to cover here is just classic me, to be honest. There is a limp under the gun. We are playing 5 5 10, so it's a limp for 10. Cough makes it 35. The button, small blind, and big blind all call. So pretty much everyone has V pipped in this hand so far. And at this point, basically any two playable cards is going to be looking like a squeeze to me. I look down at pocket sevens, definitely a playable hand, and I make it 200. The button is the only caller, and we are heading heads up to a flop of queen 4-3 with two clubs. I think I could go either way with a check or a bet here, but I think sevens, this is actually quite a good flop for. And I do need some protection against lots of random two overcards hands like king jack. I don't really want to give a free card to. So I bet 175 and the opponent calls again. The turn, would you believe, is the seven of spades. Absolute dream turn. Five, six does get there, but I'm not too worried about that. We basically have the nuts and actually I decide to slow down and check. The reason for this is to encourage some stabs from random holdings in my opponent's range uh, that think I maybe have something like ace 10, ace king here and I'm pretty much giving up with the hand. He's going to want to bluff with some of his floats as well as protection with hands like pocket 10s, pocket 9s, that kind of thing as well. So I check, the opponent does take the bait and bet 400. I send it for 2.2k effective, hoping that this kind of looks suspicious and non-believable. And it clearly does when the opponent tanks for quite a while with just ace jack high. Seeming like he's actually considering calling before eventually folding. So we get this one through and we're off to a good start on the stream. In this next one, I open under the gun to 40 with ace queen offsuit. The suits of each of these cards are going to become relevant. So I have the ace of spades and the queen of diamonds. I get called by the button, small blind, and straddle. So we're heading four ways to a flop, and it is jack 5-3 with two spades and one diamond. Action checks through, and the turn is the king of diamonds. So I now have a gut shot as well as pretty relevant blockers on either a spade or a diamond, meaning that I could represent a flush on either of those outcomes. The straddle bets 50, and all three opponents call, including myself. So we are still four ways to a river. And that river is the four of diamonds, bringing in that backdoor diamond flush, potentially. And when checked to, I think about this for quite a while, and I don't really see it as being too credible for any of my opponents to have flush here. If they did, it could potentially in include the queen of diamonds that I hold in my hand as well. So after a while of deliberating, I do decide to bluff here for almost a full pot sizing into three opponents. Definitely a risky player to make. I make it 300 and all of the opponents fold, including the King-10 that we see here. So we actually make top pair fold. Definitely a good outcome. I thought jacks would definitely fold, as in a pair of jacks would definitely fold, and a king every now and again might fold, depending on what kind of opponent is holding that card. Um, but yeah, definitely a good outcome. We get this one through, and because of the half-hour delay, the opponents aren't going to know that I'm finding bluffs in that spot just yet. In this next hand, we have pocket sixes in the big blind. We see limps from hijack, button, and small blind, and I decide to try and isolate one or two of these players with a raise. I make it 75. Hijack and button both call, so kind of gone to plan so far. Flop is 10 of hearts, three of clubs, two of spades. So sixes is second pair here with some backdoor straight stuff going on as well. Since I'm out of position three ways, I decide to start with the check here and see how things progress, and the action checks through. Turn is the four of spades and therefore I pick up a gut shot and it's actually one of the only cards that could be an undercard to my pocket pair as well. So pretty good turn for me. And in general, in these multi-way spots, when action checks through on the flop and you have any kind of sort of value hand that can benefit from protection, I think it's going to be good and profitable to bet here with any of that stuff, as well as any kind of bluff that might have some equity here, such as any ace, for example, as well. Uh, opponents are generally going to be weak when it checks through on the flop after the pre-flop aggressor has checked as well. So those ranges are attackable, basically, is what I'm trying to say here. I bet 150 and the hijack calls. The river. Think of a river, everyone. What is the perfect river right now? We find it again. It's the five of hearts. I think for quite a long time in game here about what the best course of action might be. I think about what kind of hands are calling me on the turn. And I think a great deal of them probably include an ace. And the ones that don't are probably going to want to bluff this card as well. So I think the best course of action is going to be a check to check raise. That allows us to get value from the bluffing portions of his range that just fold if I bet. As well as telling a kind of unbelievable story again. 
when I check the opponent bets and I raise, which is what's going to happen here. So I check the hijack goes for a size of 230. I obviously don't know what he has at this point, whether it's a bluff or an ace betting for value. I think it's obviously very unlikely that he has a six or especially six, seven, which is the only hand I lose to. I raised to 750 and in hindsight, I think I could have probably gone a little bit bigger. I just didn't want to be too greedy. I make it 750. The opponent snap calls and is very surprised to see the pocket sixes. Holds to me in the hijack now with king 10 of clubs. I'm going to open it up to 35. The big blind three bets me to 125 and in position with a suited Broadway hand like this, I'm definitely going to be calling. So that's what I do. And we heads up to a flop. The flop is 954 with zero clubs on it. So pretty much a complete whiff for me. The opponent checks and I check behind. Turn is the five of clubs. So still absolutely nothing for me. The opponent now bets 105. And there's no real reason for me to call here other than I have some devious intentions on quite a few rivers here that I think he's going to have ace high a lot of the time and be fairly face up with how he's playing his hand here and on a lot of rivers I'm going to be able to bluff them uh ace high isn't going to want to bet the turn get called and then check call river on a lot of cards where I could just have a pocket pair or I've connected with the board in some way here so I call with the intention to bluff when checked to on basically any river but an ace. And the river is the ace of clubs. So the opponent does check, but I think now he is going to have value enough of the time that things that are just auto calls that I think the bluff isn't really worth doing anymore. I give up and check behind and sure enough, the opponent does show the ace queen. At least I didn't lose the extra river bet there. Getting a little bit further into the stream now and the 25 straddles have started being put on. So it's now basically a 5, 5, 10, 25 game. In this hand, I'm in the 25 straddle with pocket sevens. The cutoff opens to 75. Everyone else folds and closing the action. Pocket sevens feels like a pretty natural call. So I go ahead and call. The flop is 10, 9, 2. I start with a check. The opponent checks behind and the turn is also a 10. So I think he's going to be betting a 10 on the flop the vast majority of the time here. My hand is looking pretty good and his hand is looking a lot like ace high, king high, queen jack probably bets. So he's kind of in that ballpark. And as I spoke about before, I think when the action checks through, generally turn stabs with hands that need some protection are going to do well. I go ahead and do that. I bet 100 and the opponent calls. River, however, again, not a very good one. It's an ace. And I think a lot of his calls on the turn will be ace high holdings that I was getting value from. I now lose to those. So I go ahead and check. The opponent checks behind, luckily, and we do win. The opponent says straight after this hand, he didn't think he could represent the ace and he definitely could have done. I was check folding here every single time. So good result there. The session takes a little bit of a speed bump here. It is 5, 5, 10, 25. Under the gun limps for that 25. Holds to me in the big blind with ace king offsuit and seems like a good spot to try and isolate that early position limper so i make it 125. the 25 straddle makes it 300 which is pretty small uh under 3x my size in position and we're deep as well and i think you can kind of take this either way sometimes people will three bet a smaller than usual size with super premiums where they want you to kind of trap yourself because you feel like you have to call preflop so sometimes that's just a lot of aces and kings and sometimes it's with the more other ends side of the spectrum, the, the weaker hands that they want to three bet with and they just don't want to risk as much money. But it's definitely caught my attention that this isn't kind of a normal three bet sizing. The under the gun player then cold calls the 300, which also definitely catches my attention. And these spots, and this is why you shouldn't cold call three bets. These spots are such a print to start four betting wide because you're leveraging the three better against the limper and yourself and the limper is just going to get squeezed out of the pot in that situation a lot after putting in quite a lot of money dead so i go for a size of 900 unfortunately you'll be seeing on screen at this point the graphics and you'll see that this isn't going to work very well um the straddle shoves for about 3.3 3.4k somewhere around there the under the gun limper who has cold called the 300 now folds as expected his range was always going to be kind of middling pocket pairs King, queen suited, ace, queen off suit, that kind of thing, which I thought my hand is obviously doing very well against. And at this point, I kind of sigh snap call, and that is a lot to do with the fact I kind of miscalculated slightly the guy who's all in stack, thinking that I'd already put in more than a third of that stack. And basically, as a general rule of thumb, once you've done that, you shouldn't really be folding because you're most likely going to have enough equity with whatever you have and whatever they have to call. So I flick in the call and uh, I think maybe I could have got away with it. Um, we run it twice. 
obviously not going to win those very often, so we are going to get scooped, and it's a, it's unfortunate. The, the situation was kind of messed up a little bit for me by the under the gun players actions i think maybe without that i don't get stacked maybe i find the four bit fold in that case because sizes are going to be a bit smaller and stuff so it's a shame uh but definitely speed bump in the session like i said and after a very good start where i was running well i'm now actually down 500 or a thousand something like that so moving forward hoping to get back to the run good Holds to me in the cutoff now with Queen Jack offsuit, which is going to be an open for me. I make it 75 and the 10 and 25 straddles both call. So we're in position three ways heading to a flop. Flop is ace, ace seven with a couple of spades. I haven't really got much going on, but when checked to, I think for a small sizing, this is probably just going to be an auto profit kind of bet where if the opponents don't have an ace, it's probably not going to be a call for either of them. So I decided to go for a small stab here. I continue for 75, so about one third pot and the 25 straddle calls. I'm pretty much done with the hand at this point uh, until I turn a queen and that means that if he did call me with some of the lower pocket pairs I might not be winning however when checked to I decide the best course of action is now to check behind he either has an ace or he has something like a flush draw or a lower pair that I'm now beating and I think betting again doesn't really achieve that much here so I check behind the river is a third ace now very interesting run out I've ended up with a full house and it's kind of the nut full house if he doesn't have quads only really lose to quads and he now leads for 200 you can see the kind of look on my face on screen now as things are computing i look kind of confused then disgusted then have a smile of realization that the opponent probably only ever has quads here it's the only hand that really makes sense arriving to the river in this fashion i actually verbalize it out loud as you will hear you just have quads don't you that's really annoying and then call anyway and lose to quads very well played Return of the Ace King offsuit here, and I am looking for some redemption. Cutoff makes it 75, the button calls. I'm going to put in the squeeze to 350, and both of them call. So we have a pretty big pot brewing here, hoping for a good flop, and definitely find it on Ace Ace 2. So flopping trips with the best possible kicker. And actually, I think you can go either way, but I'm going to probably C bet this a lot, kind of for similar reasons as the last one. I think it's just going to be an auto profit bet. And the opponents are probably going to think that I will be C betting this flop for a small size very often. So I also want to do it when I actually have the strong hands as well. That was my thought process in game anyway. So I continue for 300 and the cutoff calls. As you can see, he has king high. So my thought process seems to be along the right lines there. On the seven of diamonds turn, I decide to slow down and check now. We have about a one SPR and I think there's more chance of me getting paid by betting a small stabby kind of size on the flop being called checking if he checks behind i then jam river so that's the plan he checks behind the river is the jack of clubs and while i do potentially lose to ace jack not very many combos of it and i think there's some stuff that i can get value from there's still all the worst asx as well as non-believing hands such as pocket nines if he just thinks i'm going crazy here i go all in for his 1.6k effective and he folds same opponent as the last hand we are going to tangle again this time i am going to be out of position and facing the three bet so it's 5 5 10 25 i'm going to open from the small blind to 100 the 25 straddle is going to make it 365 kind of a random amount i've got ace 10 suited and i'm out of position we are kind of short stacked but i think this is a good enough hand to continue i, I wouldn't argue too strongly against if someone thought that this was a fold but I decided to go over the call in this situation. We see a flop of nine of hearts, nine of clubs, seven of hearts. So I flopped the nut flush draw. While I could decide to go with a donk here, I don't think I'm telling a very credible story that I'm going to have trips or a full house and decide to donk here. And the other best hands in my range are kind of like tens, jacks, queens. And those benefit more from checking and getting him to bluff since we have, again, like a one SPR. Uh, getting him to bluff his kind of overcards and three bet bluff kind of hands that we're doing very well against. So I check with this hand as well. Uh, we have got ace high and the nut flush draw. So when he moves all in for about 11.25, the graphics on screen are wrong. It says he has 3,000, but it's it's just over 1,000. So actually getting a fairly decent price. And there's a chance I thought that maybe he does have something worse than ace high here. And if not, we have decent equity against a lot of his holdings as well. So I put in the call. We see the run out. He does one time me. So get not a very good run out and luckily the ace high is actually good despite breaking out last hand of the session now and in my opinion probably the most interesting one as well so it's 5 5 10 25 again obviously it has been since about halfway point in the session everyone just started auto having the 25 on small blind calls uh just completing the 25 
The big blind makes it 100, and from the 25 straddle, I decide to put in a 3-bet here with the suited ace in position. I make it 300, and the big blind calls. So it's going to be a 3-bet pot in position, and we get a very interesting flop. The jack of hearts, 9 of spades, 2 of hearts. The opponent checks it over to me, and this feels like a pretty natural and automatic c-bet. I go for a size of 350 with the nut flush draw, and much to my surprise, get raised to 950. Instantly, as soon as I see this, I start getting the feeling that this is going to be kind of a session defining pot either way. It's going to get big and his range is looking very strong. I think he tells a very credible story for having something like pocket jacks or pocket nines was my thought process in game. I can't really three bet this flop because I don't really have more of those nutted hands than he does. I have kind of the same amount. And if anything, he has two is probably and I don't. So don't like the idea of three betting. I'm always going to be calling. And the fact that my position is very good for that as well. It means I get to see what the turn is, how he reacts to that. And then subsequently the river as well, which is going to be a big advantage in this growing large pot very quickly. So I decide to call and the turn is an interesting one in the queen of diamonds. It's interesting because it brings in some things that make jacks and nines not really the effective nuts anymore. I could definitely have something like king 10 suited, for example. It also means that I actually pick up a gut shot to go along with my ace high flush draw, giving me some extra equity in the hand. And this is where my opponent, I think, makes a little bit of a mistake here. He bets 900, which is a very favorable price for me. And it leaves kind of like a one SPR on the river. I'm getting direct odds to call with the amount of equity that I have with my flush draw, which is definitely going to be clean outs as well as the gut shot, which I assume will also be clean outs a lot of the time. And on top of that, I get to see what he does on different rivers. And there will also be some bluff outs. For example, a king I thought would be a card that he's going to check. He's never really going to have a 10 in his range, whereas I can. And I can therefore move all in as a bluff on a king as well. So I call. I think it's a very easy call and we do get there in sneaky fashion the 10 of spades so i river the bottom end of the straight obviously it's possible that he could have some hands with a king in it notably the king high flush draws but when he snap checks and we're talking within one to three seconds he checked this river i now know that i have the nuts and the following 30 seconds to a minute is all hollywood i'm gonna be moving all in i just want the opponent to think that i'm thinking about bluffing with missed hearts that haven't got there so I give it a good 30 seconds to a minute, like I said, and eventually move all in for 3.1k. And this is now not an enviable spot for the opponent. I think it is a tough one. He actually starts saying out loud that maybe I have busted hearts. That is how I would play them, etc. Before eventually folding. So we don't quite get the full double up, but it is definitely a welcome large pot to win towards the end of the session here. And that just about wraps it up. We are going to... Finish the session 3.2k in profit a good one for a 5 5 10 obviously it could have been a lot better without that kind of messy ace king hand in the middle there i think it was a little bit of a punt to be honest a lot of people will say that it's kind of automatic and you're just supposed to get stacked there he's not supposed to have aces that often when he has kings you're gonna have some equity but i think maybe i don't have to lose absolutely all of it there maybe four bet fold would have been the best player but overall happy with how i played the session i enjoy playing on dust till dawn live i think it's a really high quality stream that is being ran very well and i look forward to playing there again leave me some feedback on this video we've done it a different style with with me being sat in like more of a studio kind of thing we've got the mic the camera to do the review of the hands let me know what you think let me know how my new editor is doing we would love to hear from you in the comments thank you for watching tell your friends i'm posting constantly 